see you. Uh, welcome to my home. This is my office. So I'm not in church because it's very cold in church at the moment, uh, but I'm actually at home and I've had a tidy up because I knew you were coming. So welcome to my slightly tidier than usual office. It's lovely to see you and I hope that you're all well. Today is the second day of thinking about Jess's tree. So I'm really glad to be able to be with you for day two of our journey together. So before we come to worship, let's get ourselves ready. We take the Bible and we remember God the Father and we place the Bible on the table and we say, Father, we are here. We are here for you. We've got our symbol of the cross and we remember God's son, Jesus. We say, Jesus, we are here. We are here for you. And I've already lit the candle. I don't know if you can see the flame there. And the candle reminds us of the Holy Spirit as we pray, Spirit, we are here. We are here for you. I've got something I need to let you know, a little secret. This is the second time I'm filming this because the first time I filmed it and I lit the candle and the match broke in half. I've got two halves of a match here and the top of the match flew over here and burnt a little hole in my table. So that's why I thought I'd light the candle all ready for us. So it's been a bit scary getting this ready for you. But let's think now about what we're here to think about. We can calm down. I can settle down a bit and stop worrying that I might be setting my office on fire and get comfortable. So today we're thinking about Adam and Eve. Now you might remember, you might have heard their story before. Adam and Eve were the first man and woman in the Bible. And God put Adam and Eve to live in the most beautiful garden. And he said that they could eat all the fruit in the garden except for the fruit from one tree. And they weren't allowed to eat that fruit, but they could eat all the other fruits that they wanted. So Adam and Lee, Eve lived happily in the garden and they ate all the fruit. And one day when Eve was walking around the garden, she saw a big snake wrapped around the branches of the tree, the tree that they weren't allowed to eat the fruit from. And the snake seemed to be talking to her. And the snake said to her, surely you can eat this fruit. Look how delicious it is. And Eve had a good look at the fruit and she thought, well, that looks very tasty. And the snake said to her, surely God didn't say you would die if you ate it. So Eve was persuaded to pick the fruit. She had a good look at it and it looked so tasty. So she ate some. And then Adam came along, her husband, and she said, look at this delicious fruit. Why don't you have some too? And so Adam ate the fruit as well. So they did the very thing that God had asked them not to do. And so we pick up the story now, a little after that moment. And the Bible says, then their eyes were opened and they knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made clothes for themselves. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. And the Lord God called and said to the man, Where are you? And the man said, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And the Lord God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten the fruit of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, The woman gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate it. The Bible isn't just full of stories about people who got life right all the time. People who always did the right thing, or people who were always brave and courageous. It's about ordinary people, people who got things wrong sometimes, people who made mistakes, who made poor decisions and choices, people who knew the difference between right and wrong, but chose to do the wrong thing. So the Bible's a bit like a story about us, isn't it? 
we don't get things right all the time. And sometimes we can deliberately choose to do something that we know is wrong. I wonder how you behave when you've done something that you know is wrong. In the story of Adam and Eve, Eve gets the blame. She gets blamed by Adam. Adam says to God, well, Eve, my wife gave me the fruit. And if we were to read more of the story, we discover that Eve blames the snake and says, the snake told me to eat the fruit. So I wonder if when you've been caught doing something you shouldn't do, whether you've ever blamed someone else. Or I wonder if you've been given the blame by someone else. I wonder how that felt for you. Perhaps if we're found out when we do things wrong, there are better ways of responding than blaming someone else. But what we learn from this story is that God was looking out for Adam and Eve, that even though they'd got it wrong, he wanted to come and talk to them and to be friends with them again. I wonder if you've ever had that experience when you've done something wrong and someone's really cross with you, but they still want to be your friend afterwards. I wonder how that felt for you. So our symbol today to go on the tree, I'm going to move the candle because I've got a bit nervous after I nearly burnt my table. Let me move the candle out of the way and then I'm going to lean forward and show you the symbol for today. So this is the symbol for today. So I don't know if you can see, it's an apple. So it's the shape of an apple. And I don't know if you can see here, it's the face of a snake. And the snake, you have to imagine, is wrapped around the apple and around the apple and this is the bottom of the snake's tail. So I hope you have a better look at that. Hopefully you can get a little bit closer to see the apple and the snake being wrapped around and around and then its tail popping out at the bottom. So that's our symbol for today, the symbol of Adam and Eve. So let me see, let me prop that up. If I move the Bible, I can prop that symbol up there. Oop, is that going to stand up? Not really, there you go. Oh dear. Hopefully that will stand up a little bit for you to see. And so let's come to our time of prayer together. So if you'd like to, you can put your hands together and close your eyes, or you might like to focus on the candle, which I'll move towards the front there so you can see that better. So let's pray. Creator God, you love your children no matter what they do. We pray that you will help us to turn away from choices that we know are wrong. When we get things wrong, we thank you that you are always willing to forgive us. Help us to be kind and love each other when things do not go the way we would like them to. Help us not to blame each other. Thank you for your love, which always calls us back and forgives us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to, I invite you to join with me as we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So I wish you all a really happy day. I'll be back with you, I think, one day next week. So I'm looking forward to that as we find out more about Jesse's tree. But let me give you a final prayer of blessing. 
may you know the love and peace of God with you today and always and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you all today and always.